Life began in the ocean, and the evolution of life always takes us back to our beginnings in the marine world. We're standing here on land, but did you know that 70% of the Earth is covered in water? From the rivers to the streams to the big wide ocean, that is a complete world of its own. However, most of the ocean is largely un unexplored. In fact, more is known about Mars than the life in the ocean. Our ocean is the next frontier. The conception of the video on ocean literacy began at the International Pacific Marine Educators Network Conference. The conference was held in Santiago and Patagonia, Chile, and consisted of marine science educators and scientists. The marine advocates discussed ways to integrate marine science principles into education for students from kindergarten all the way to high school. We realized the importance of instilling marine education in young people in order to foster a desire to sustain the magnificent ecosystems the ocean is home to. Through this video on ocean literacy, we hope to convey that the ocean and humanity are inextricably intertwined, and by learning about marine science in context of essential principles and fundamental concepts, students can become stewards of the ocean. Two billion years ago, the only life on Earth were prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are a group of unicellular organisms that lack a membrane-bound nucleus. The nucleus is where DNA is stored. DNA, also known as deoxide ribonucleic acid, are chromosomes that build the characteristics that define who we are. But on the contrary, eukaryotic organisms do have a nucleus. Charles Darwin, one of the most influential naturalists, who established his theories in the public eye of science. For example, his theory of natural selection where organisms better adapt to their environment and reproduce. Darwin's theory of evolution states that we relate to common ancestors. The theory of survival of the fittest means any traits that fit for a species will remain strong and carry on to the offspring. Some traits may be modified to help the species strive for a higher chance of survival in an environment. Although there are land and marine mammals in a different phylum, there is evidence in the fossil record that we are all related. For example, the wolf and the whale. We can see that there are homologous structures. Homologous structures are bones that we share with our ancestors. If you notice, we have a five, two, and one count. As early as humanity spans, the evidence is apparent that marine life once inhabited terrestrial surface. More than two million years ago, whales lived off of the Pacific coast of South America. Now they are emerging atop hills in Chile more than a kilometer below the surface. Similarly, in Charlotte, Vermont, whale bones have been discovered as early as 1849. When studying and observing the different phyla of species, we begin to make connections and understand each phylum's role as a microcosm of the evolution of life. Through conserved and derived features, we can see the resemblance of species to themselves, from the most primitive jawless fish to the effective swimmer, the shark. We see that gills were favorable for marine animals and allowed species to filter oxygen while they swam. The notochord conversely proved to be ineffective because marine life shifted to having skeletal spinal cords or cartilaginous support systems. Take, for example, the chordates in all species with notochords. The notochord is known as the beginnings of a backbone, and later developed into a spinal cord. It is even more amazing to see the complexity of body systems over time, from the tube within a tube structure of some marine species for circulation to the most effective countercurrent circulatory system of the sharks. The evidence and examples of evolution and descent with modification are endless and we see them every day. We hope you enjoyed this video and use this as a platform for learning and facilitating the teaching of marine science.